Okay, guys. So let's uh, let's look at a little more complicated Coulomb's law problem um, that will give us an opportunity to review working with vectors. So working with vectors is going to be something that you're going to need to be strong on um, for the second quarter physics course, and it's going to come up in your other courses too. So I thought this might be a good chance to work some review of that in. So here's the problem. Um, instead of charges arranged in a line, we have charges that are arranged in a triangle. So we have three charged particles uh, placed at the corners of an equilateral triangle of side um, 1.2 meters. And the charges are uh, 7.6 microcoulombs, negative 8 microcoulombs, and negative 4.5 microcoulombs. And what we were wanting to do is to calculate the magnitude of the net force on uh, Q1 due to the other two and find its direction. And then we're going to calculate the magnitude of the net force on Q2 um, due to the other two charges, Q1 and Q3, and find the direction of that force. So, OK. Um, to put it in terms of uh, the nomenclature that we've been using, for part A, what we want to do is find the force on 1 uh, due to everything else. So we could call that force net. And really, we're looking for the magnitude of that. So I'm going to be kind of uh, persnickety, or try to, with indicating when I'm talking about magnitudes with this, because compared to some things that we've done before, this can get kind of complicated, because with positive and negative charges, you can have forces that are pointing uh, uh, in opposite directions that are attractive or repulsive. So I'll try and be really explicit about that um, to get uh, to start with so that you can see what I'm doing. And then as we go forward, I'll probably be a little less strict about that. Um, but so we're looking for the magnitude uh, on Q1. And to get us started, let's put in some information. So uh, Q1 is positive. 7.6 microcoulombs. This one down here is negative 8 microcoulombs, and this is also negative 4.5 microcoulombs. Um, let's draw ourselves a cartoon. So I recommend this. Um, the So here's our Q1. Now, Q1 and Q2 are of opposite signs. So we know that the force on Q1 due to Q2 is going to be pulling it towards Q2. Um, two. Um, and we also know that Q1 and Q3 are of opposite signs. So this force is going to be like this. Uh, I'll try and draw this as nice and equilaterally as I can. It's going to look like that. And this will help us um, keep track of the directions of things. OK, so to find this net force, let's break it into components, the contributions from F, uh, from Q, uh, the interaction between Q1 and Q2, and the interaction between Q1 and Q3, and add the X and Y components for each of those contributions to find uh, the total in X and Y on Q2, or on Q1, sorry, and then find the magnitude of that total force and the direction of that force. So this is what we're ultimately after. Um, but to start, let's find uh, the force on 1 in the x direction. So what are we going to have? Uh, so we're going to have, uh, notice, we'll have a contribution from 1, 2, or from uh, charge 2 acting on 1. And that's pointed in the negative x direction. So I'm going to write it like this. We would have a negative magnitude of f1, 2. Um, and the angle, we just want the x piece, right? So if we draw, uh, we know this equilateral triangle. Uh, this is going to be 60 degrees, so we would want uh, just half of that would give us 
30 degrees. So this would be multiplied by a factor of sine 30. Okay. And that would give us our x contribution uh, of the force of uh, 2 on charge 1. And in addition to that, we would have the x contribution of 3 on 1. So plus, let me just be kind of meticulous here. So the magnitude of F13, now that will also be multiplied by a factor of sine 30. Okay. And that would pick out this x piece. So those are our um, x contributions. Now, Coulomb's law would tell us the actual magnitude of f12 and f13. So let's put that in. That would be kq1, q2 over r squared. Put them both in here. And to try and be uh, really clear, I'm going to indicate these by as just the magnitudes. So what this would do is this would force all these charges to be positive, because we've already accounted for the direction information. So I don't want us to put the charges in and then flip something around and make one of these uh, change the direction of one of these. So by just looking at the magnitudes of the charges uh, is another way of saying that I'm just um, looking at the magnitude of the forces. Okay, so notice we can simplify this a little bit. There's a lot of stuff that's in common. So let me just do that. I'm going to pull out a factor of k, q1, r squared. So conveniently, the r's are all the same. Um, we can even pull out the sine 30 degrees here. Uh, and then this would get multiplied by, we would have negative Q2 plus uh, Q3. Okay. And notice uh, if Q2 and Q3 were the same size, this would sum to zero. And that should kind of agree with our intuition. If the uh, Q2 and Q3 were the same, uh, size charges, their x contributions would cancel out. So let me actually paste our picture here so we can keep an eye on this as we go here. Oops. Um, so that imbalance between the size of the magnitudes of those two charges is reflected in this difference. So why don't we calculate this. If we uh, put in our numbers, you know, the, this 1.2 meters, um, uh, the different uh, charges, we would find that this comes out to be, so I would do, you know, you probably do this on a um, computer or a calculator or something, negative 0.083. And we're talking about force. So this is Newton's. And this is our F1 on 1 in the x direction. OK, so now let's do the same thing in y. So the sum of forces on 1, q1 in the y direction, what are we going to have? Well. In the y, notice they're both pointing down. So both forces are pointed in the same direction. So, and notice also that um, with how I have the, the angle broken up here, we would need uh, the, co the cosine contributions. So let's just write this as, we would have F1 on two times cosine of 30 degrees.
um, plus one. So uh, the force of Q3 on one times a pick up a factor of cosine theta. Um, and we're just going to find uh, the size of this. It's positive, but we know that it's pointing down. So we'll take that into account when we uh, calculate the angle. So I'm just going to mark these as magnitudes. So this would be, you know, Q1, Q2. Kind of the same situation. Oops, I left out our cosine. 30. And we can consolidate this a little bit. Most all of this is uh, common. Except now, since our charges are, are uh, or since both of these forces are pointed in the same direction, this will add together. Okay. Um, and when we put in our numbers and uh, compute this, we would find that this is point five one newtons, and this would be with how I'm keeping track the force on one in the y direction. Okay. Now. What's the total going to be? Well, uh, let's connect back to our picture here. So we found that the s, the x component contribution is pointing like this. Uh, it's negative, and it's pretty small um, relative to the y piece, which is pointing down. We know this one is a lot larger in magnitude. Um, it's also negative, although we've found uh, what we found here was actually just the size of it, right? We know from our picture that it's going to be pointing down. So the resultant magnitude of the combination of those, if I can draw an arrow, would be uh, in that direction. So it's a little bit in the negative x direction, a lot in the negative y direction. Um, and so this is really what we're after. This is what we were looking for above. Um, to find its magnitude, that's simple enough. We can just use Pythagorean theorem. And when we crunched uh, those numbers, we would find that this is about 0.52 Newtons. And in terms of the angle, so it gets kind of tricky when you, or I should say, it can get kind of confusing when you're working uh, far away from, you know, the x-axis. I feel like normally we think of, you know, when angles are are over here, it's it's a lot easier to keep track, potentially. So um, we're going to want to specify this thing from the positive x-axis. Like, ah, my pen is not working here. Sorry. Specify it like that. That's kind of the default way of, of specifying our angles. Um, but it's probably a lot easier to just look at this and recognize, OK, if I make a tri triangle out of this piece, I can find this angle. And then I could subtract it off from 270 degrees. So let's do that. Um, let's just call this alpha or something. So you know from tangent alpha, that's just going to be the size of our y or our uh, x piece over the y piece. So let's do like this. Um, 
Um, and of course, you then have to take an inverse tangent, compute that. So let me just draw like an arrow like this. And when you do that, you would find that this um, angle is about 9 degrees. And so you could then specify this from the x-axis as being, you know, 270 minus 9, so about 260. Why don't I just specify it like this at about 260 degrees? So that's the force, um, the net force on one. Okay. So this is an example where um, we were working with opposite charges. So both of them were, uh, in both cases, they were attracting. Um, let's look at another example with the same configuration where uh, one of them is attracting and one of them is repulsive. And this will, I think, reinforce to you the idea that it's important to uh, have a picture to keep track of the directions. So I'm just going to paste our um, our picture again. Okay, and now this time, let's look at um, the force on two. So what we're looking for is force two net. So it's the same kind of procedure. Let's look at you know the the force on two in the x direction first again. So in X, uh, oh, let me draw a cartoon again. So on Q2, uh, what are we going to have? We'll have uh, so Q2 and Q1 are ah, opposite charges. So they'll there will be an attraction between them. So the force of on 2 due to 1 is pointing like that towards Q1. But between Q2 and Q3, since they're the same sign, it's gonna be, there's going to be a repulsion. So that force will be pointed like that, force on 2 due to 3. OK. Um, so this, we'll use the cartoon to keep ch uh, track of directions of everything. So uh, between 2 and 1, um, the x piece of this, now we can work with this angle here, the x piece of that would be F21 times a cosine, or if it's maybe more clear to, ha to show you there's theta. Um, and that one will be positive. Now the force on 2 due to 3, however, is going to be negative, and we don't have to worry about the angle because it's pointing along the x-axis. So this will be minus. Let's do like I did before, indicate the magnitudes. So then we use Coulomb's law to find the magnitudes of those, so it depends on charges inversely proportional to the distance between them um, oops left out my cosine um, and then again we can consolidate this there's a lot of stuff that's in common Um, the stuff that isn't will have 
that minus uh, three, um, and we can go ahead and and compute this, and we would find that this would be about negative point oh three five. Okay, and maybe we can just do y over here. Uh, in the y direction, it's a little bit simpler. We're only going to have a contribution from uh, the interaction between Q2 and Q1. The other one was solely in X. So in Y, we have the force uh, due to 1 on 2. Now we only want the Y piece of this, so instead of the cosine, we'll pick up a factor of sine theta. Um, put in here, according to Coulomb's law, magnitude of this will be. Compute, put in the actual numbers and compute it. And we would find that this is 0 0.328. Um, so then again, if we want to find the, well, let's revisit our picture here. So the x contribution was uh, negative and fairly small. The y contribution, on the other hand, is about 10 times larger. Um, and it's positive. Look something like that. And so, you know, the sum of those vectors, oh man, if I can draw a diagonal here, looks something like that. Um, and of course, we would add them up the same as we did before. It's going to be similar, to, you know, to 0.32 because it's, uh, you know, mostly in the y direction. We would find that the magnitude of that is 0.33 newtons. And then for the angle, you know, we're interested in that angle. Um, and we could, you can visualize this one a little bit easier maybe, or I can visualize it easier. Um, so we can compute that directly. Um, again, with the, uh, with the tangent. So we know that tangent theta will be the y over the x. So this will be and you know you take an arc tangent of that and you would find that theta um, is about 96 degrees. So Force 2 net is 0.33 newtons at about 96 degrees. So this gives you an example where you have um, both attract, attraction and repulsion. Um, and another, you know, some, some practice with vectors. So uh, decomposing them into components and then adding the components. You know, just reinforcing skills like it's it's super useful to, to draw yourself a cartoon of where things are pointed. It helps you keep track of all the uh, the signs, the directions of things. Um, so hopefully this helps. It should be uh, pretty relevant to your homework.